just find one outside. Hey, we're Fred and Dora, and we're here to <laughs> sing all your favorite hits as polka songs. <laughs> Uh, my name is John Patrick Lara, and I'm the voice of the sniper. And uh, like seven characters on Dota 2, and lots of other characters on lots of other video games. And I forget, who are you now? This is how little they knew. Uh, when I got the game, they always send you some lines to read and some artwork from the game to show you what the game looks like. And it was all kind of half-timbered houses and stuff like that, so it looked kind of medieval England, and so I thought, okay, I'll give them a little, little Sean Connery, and maybe that'll be appropriate. And they hired me when I got out there. They said, oh, we really like that Sean Connery thing you did, you know, that Welsh accent? And of course, I didn't have the heart to tell them that Sean Connery is Scottish, but you know, that as you We were going on in the game, and we got to this place where I was supposed to say, goodbye, son. And I said, well, I mean, why am I saying goodbye to him? What's going on? I have no idea. And they didn't either. So they had to call the writer, and so I'm sitting there in the booth, and they're in the control room talking to him. This was before cell phones. They had to, like, you know, dial and all this kind of stuff. And uh, they finally got back to me and said, okay, what's happening here is this is where the game forks. Your son is either going to go down the street and get some bread and be right back, or he's going to go through this interdimensional time warp and go into another universe and you're never going to see him again. 
So could you say it so it would work either way? <laughs> And so I said, goodbye, Sean. And they said, great, that's great, that'll work, fine. So, but the learning curve was really sharp. I mean, by the time I was doing No One Lives Forever and, uh, and, and The Suffering and stuff like that, the writers were always at the studio with you and, and, they're, and they're just great. I mean, every writer of a game that I've ever met has been an insane maniac mutant freak. And for, for all our Valve work, yeah. the writers, Always there, always. Yeah, yeah. And, and they learned that, you know, if you're an actor, you need to know why you're saying what you're saying. Um, for instance, if I wrote W-H-A-T question mark up here where you could read it, how would you read that? What? What? And all of those are right. <laughs> depending on the situation, right? So, you know, an actor can't, you just can't write something and say, okay, say this, and, and think that it's gonna come out right. And so this is one of the main reasons that acting has gotten so much better in games over the last 20 years, is because they know how to direct actors finally. But, so I was going along happy as a clown, but then I thought, wait a minute, Ellen wants me to make more money for her. I want her to make more money for me. <laughs> so I started beating her up to get her own voice demo. And this started about 1991 or so. The, the, the real abuse started then. And, uh, <laughs> and by about 2002, was that right? 2001? In May of 2002, I got a voice demo. Because of course, what I said to John was, no, you know, I won't get any work. And women's voices, you know, they always use men. And, no, you I don't can't have the wrong, do the right that. kind of boy. Right. Nobody will like and you. so then I got a voice demo, and I immediately got work. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know, the very first job that she got. How many of you fly on our commercial airlines? Show of hands. Do you know who's in control? The very first job Ellen got was as the voice of the Honeywell Runway Approach System voice. The voice that pilots on airlines all over the world call Bitchin' Betty. Right here, right here. So the next time you're in a plane and it crashes, just go, damn you, GLaDOS! <laughs> First gigs I did, and and it was great fun. Yeah. You know, I, had, I recorded it in uh, Seattle, right. and I say things like, "Climb, climb now, <laughs> descend, descend now." And she had to say all these things in three different ways. Like yeah, and the the copy, you know, the, the the paper with the words on it that I was supposed to say was printed in three colors. Green, which was, you know, just very sort of work a day. Yellow, which was heightened. And red, which was get your stuff together right now. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. So that was fun. And meanwhile, I was doing things like uh, uh, The Matrix Online and stuff like that. And then I got an audition for a game called Half Life 2. Woo! And they hired me to play uh, all of the citizens. And it was interesting because, you know, I went in there and, and so, so do you want me to do a different voice for each citizen? And say, no, that really won't work because there's so many of them. We just, you know, we just want you to do your voice, just your voice, just read all the lines. And so if you play through Half-Life 2, you'll notice citizens talking to each other. That's just me talking to me in my <laughs> And, and they, they liked my work, and so they decided to hire me to do o Odessa Cubbage, too, which is the guy who, who teaches you how to use the rocket launcher to shoot down the, the alien helicopter. But, uh, and then, um, then they sent an audition out for a part called the Overwatch, and they were looking for a woman for that, and so I'm on audition for that. Yeah, and uh, they, they said part of the direction was, you know, they wanted, they wanted sort of British slash Scottish slash, you know, I don't know. And I have to tell you all that I, I really didn't know what the recording was for. Right, right. It, uh, game, what, you know, I don't understand this, didn't make any, you know, okay, yeah, sure, I can say these words. And, uh, and it sounded very technical and involved. 
But so, I have to I just interject. Uh -huh. So you have to understand, she didn't know what this was for, even though I had been doing computer games for six years at that point. <laughs> this why, is how why, much wise you know, Why should I care? <laughs> <laughs> just bring on the money, that's all I care about. That's right, that's right. But so they hired, go ahead. Yeah, so, so they hired me and I, and I went into the studio and all of this stuff sounded very technical. And I really, even during all of the recording, and of course Mark Laidlaw is the writer for the Half-Life games. Is it? You keep looking at me. And he, would, and he was, you know, always in the studio, you know, across the glass. And he would direct me about how, you know, how these lines should sound. But uh, I did my best work that I could thinking, I have no idea what I'm doing. Right. And it came out, and so now when I get to play Half-Life 2, which I do a lot, I'm always glad to see me. <laughs> and my wife is always trying to get me arrested. So, <laughs> so young men, that's what marriage is about. <laughs> but, but at this point, I mean, you have to understand that voice actors always go into the studio by themselves. I mean, you know, studio time is expensive, we're expensive, they don't want us sitting around while somebody else is working. And a lot of time when you go in, you really have no idea what you're going to be doing. Right. Because we audition for all of these different parts, but you know, you do an audition and then pretty much you forget about it. You're just getting ready to do the next audition. So, you know, John and I uh, both do voices for Defense of the Ancients too. John does seven voices in the game. And I do Brood, Mother, and Death Prophet. But of course, I auditioned for several of the roles, didn't know which ones I had gotten until I went into the studio. And then they sort of played my audition for me, and my Death Prophet, Death Prophet, she's sort of Middle European. But they said, as I was recording Death Prophet, they said, well, you know, there's another voice in the game that sort of has that same accent. Can you do something else? Can you do French? And so I had to completely sort of rethink about it. And so the accent of Death Prophet moves from like Romania, you know, slowly, slowly across the continent to France. So we call Death Prophet Euro Trash. <laughs> But, uh, but so, but they hired us both for Half-Life 2, and we did all the work for Half-Life 2, and it came out, and it was a big success, and uh, then I got an audition for several roles in a game called Team Fortress 2. And they said right off the bat that they were thinking about me for the sniper in particular, but they wanted me to read for several things, which I did. I forget who all I read for, but... Uh, but you know they gave you know once again they gave me lines and they gave me a, a drawing of the of the of the character and uh, and they were saying that they were thinking maybe that the sniper was an Aussie and so I gave them my best Aussie and I got that job and then they sent out an audition for the announcer or some sometimes victory. <laughs> One of the times John, uh, I had gone in to do, you know, like an hour of the announcer, and John was scheduled right after me. And so I said to the guys, as I was, you know, to Bill Van Buren and Mark Laidlaw, I said, oh, you're gonna work with my husband next. And, and they said, well, who is that? And I said, well, John Patrick Lowry. And, and so we had done all total, this work for them. It was a total Warner Brothers movie. So. <laughs> they had no idea that we were married. So, uh, you know, late, later on they... Well, and then they sent out an audition. I mean, then, you know, Team Fortress 2 was put together, and then they sent out an audition for an odd little... An odd little thing, and with the audition, they wanted a female voice, and they sent a sound file. And they sent a sound file of a computer generator. When, when Gabe Newell <laughs> was a young child, he was viciously mauled by a three. <laughs> They're thinking of just skipping and going to Half-Life 4, so...
but really we don't know. We, we don't know. The voice actors are the last people to learn anything. As a matter of fact, they try to keep us in the dark as much as possible. I know because know, they're afraid we're going to talk to somebody. <laughs> that's right. We, they know we go out to fan cons, and the last thing they want us is spilling the beans about what they're doing next. So, so we know nothing. Nothing at all. Sorry. Uh, yes, ma'am. Right there. Do you guys get royalties for all the games? No. <laughs> But we are, we are union actors, and the union uh, of which we are members is SAG-AFTRA, which is a, a conjoined union of the Screen Actors Guild and American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. So we're paid union scale to work, but in voiceover, the contract is such that you're only paid for studio time. Your only lovely John Patrick Lowry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have the lovely John Patrick Lowry on the banjo. Uh, John, can I tell? Do you, do you know the uh, what the definition of a gentleman? Do you all know the definition of a gentleman? Englishman. No, it's someone who knows how to play the banjo but chooses not to. <laughs> you know the definition of an optimist? A banjo player with a pager. <laughs> and I really don't, I don't remember all the words. Who, I need, I need uh, some assistance. Who knows the song, Want You Gone? Oh! Come, come down here. Come down here. That's right. <laughs> here, pull this chair over. We're share this. Aaron. Yo. 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 And your name is Sir. May I introduce Aaron Kennedy? So Aaron, how old were you when you first sang this song? Um, when the game when the game first came out, that was like what was it three, four years ago? Well, it was 2012. No, it was 2010. 2011. 2011. That was the first time I sang it. <laughs> In 2011, well because I'm 21 now, the game came out in front of my, I'd say about 16, 17. 16, 17. <laughs> blossoming, blossoming <laughs> in the world. Okay, so, I, Aaron, be friendly with the crowd. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I am performing in the Murder Mystery Show in about uh, an hour now, so come and see us. Also, shameless plug. Yay. Yeah. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. <laughs> How many of you guys have seen Fantasia? The Igor Stravinsky piece, Ride of Spring, with all the dinosaurs and so yeah, yeah. This is what I like to do to classical musicians. Are you ready? I'm running out of banjo jokes. Play free bird. you to sing. Yep. We expect you to sing. <laughs> It's 
except I wasn't laughing Under the circumstances I've been shockingly nice You want your freedom taken That's what I'm counting on I used to want you dead But now I only want you gone You're good! <laughs> Was a lot like you, maybe not quite as heavy. Now little Carolyn is in here too. One day they woke me up, so I can live forever. It's such a shame this thing will never happen to you. You got to show a sad life left. That's what I'm counting on. Did you think I meant you? <laughs> funny if it weren't so sad. You have been replaced. I don't need anyone now. I'm living into maybe I'll stop feeling so bad. That's right. Go fix up you disasters. That's what I'm counting on. Your voice actor too. Aaron was All right. Now, I was told, do we have any Chell or G GLaDOS cosplayers in the audience? Any Chells? Chell, come up. Come up, Chell. We have to have Chell up here. music for this. So here oh, we are. Awesome. So, Chell, come stand between us. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cat McCain. The yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the one. You all are really realizing that you're long lost. Cousins. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Belong to the same Facebook group that I help moderate. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, Aaron. Aaron and Kat. What's our note? Here we go. Everybody else. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Your science. We do what we must because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. But there's no sense crying over every mistake. You just keep on trying till you run out. Right now, 
think I prefer to stay inside. Maybe you'll find someone else to help you. Maybe let me stop. The sniper and I are going to go crash the TF2 panel in room 119 of Baldy. We are going to go crash that panel, but I also want to let you know that we will be tomorrow morning at 11 a.m.